So what else is making the news today? The year 2020, uh, let's go back to the market, had been fairly weighted by the Nigerian financial markets, and in particular, the licensed securities exchanges, not minding the global pandemic. In the main, the various exchanges have leveraged robust technologies and debt management to keep the markets running. Let's get first half 2020 status report of the National Association of Securities Dealers, OTC, from the CEO, Bola Jomali, uh, who is now to uh, shed some light on that for us on the show this Monday. Good evening, sir. It's good to see you. Okay, so let's go to the first half. What's the report from your OTC Securities Exchange in terms of trade, in terms of the issuers, and all of that within the first six months? Bring us up to speed. First six months were quite, they were quite active, the first six months. Um, understandably, the second quarter was a lot slower than the first. First quarter started off quite, quite excitedly. Uh, we had a lot of transactions in the first half. But the second half, we saw a bit of a slowdown. So first half, we saw about $7 billion being traded. And the second half, in the second quarter, we saw only about uh, $2 billion, $2.5 billion being traded um, on the market. In terms of securities, though, we saw three additional securities coming into the market uh, in that period. And so that's quite uh, encouraging for us. We were expecting about six securities to come in, but we saw about three. When, when we look at the impact of the uh, pandemic on investors' behavior, Mr. Jamali, uh, how would you describe this within the period under review, the first six months of the year? Okay, so I, I believe, and what we have seen in, in NESD is that a lot of a lot of investors uh, that we see on the market are not speculative uh, short-term investors who want to buy in and exit immediately. We see long-term positioning investors more coming into the market. So what we have seen is the decision finally being taken that you know we might as well go ahead and invest in the in the in the securities and so we're seeing large trades um, not often not many but we're seeing large trades coming in instead of the numerous small trades by retail investors so position taking is still going on i think assets in general in nigeria are slightly cheaper now and i don't really think they're going to fall much further and as a result people are taking a position in them i think that's the sentiment we're seeing um, there's always a lot of bargain hunting that's going on, and I think there are quite a few that are going on on the market that are available on the market, so people are coming in. Uh, uh, in the last six months, or, or thereabout, had also been a little bit uh, interested in terms of the uh, adjustment in terms of the foreign exchange rate by the central bank. You've, I'm sure you, you, you also see the yield environment on, on government securities, whether it's NTBs or open markets or narrow bond. And you see the interest rate environment. We had a 50 basis points cut in May. Then rates were held unchanged in July. And what does it all mean for your OTC market? Well, as I said, what, what it has done is it's um, every, anytime there's a major shift in the fundamentals of an economy, especially the financial fundamentals, you would see a slowdown in activity for people who would be reassessing the situation to decide whether they want to come in or not. So we did see quite a lot of that. We saw um, we saw some transactions that we had planned or that we were expecting being stalled and being held on to, depending the time when we get, a, we get some more clarity. Of course, for an investor who is coming in from outside the country, it is cheaper for them to wait. They expect a devaluation. Uh, for some of them, that has paid off. Uh, again, the question is, how, how much further do we think we're going to devalue by? That's, that's always the big question that... Um, you know, we, we can always speculate on that, but there's no clear, there's no clear answer. Uh, innovation is at the heart of what we're seeing across markets around the world. Talk to us about what the NESUTC has done in, from the management side, from the board side, and from technology side of things. I'd start from technology, because that's really our major driver. So for the technology side, we've always believed that we should be a uh, totally offline, a totally online market rather than a physical market. So we never started off with a trading floor, for example. That is that paid off very quickly. Um, we were actually we were actually working remote even before the lockdown started, and we have remained working remote even though we keep some skeletal service in the office. 
to attend to whoever is delivering a letter or some sort or some physical activity. But all our inquiries, all our communication, uh, all the trade activity, and we haven't seen a, we haven't been we haven't had a single minute of downtime. Um, all our activity has been fully clouded, fully backed up, and as a result, we've been able to keep the market open. Again, all our technology that we've been using to date has been locally built, and as a result, it's been quite easy and convenient for us to keep it running and to even improve and enhance uh, our, our, our technology. We are, however, um, moving on to a new platform, a new trading platform in the second half of the year. That had that received a bit of a slowdown because of um, how things were going and because the vendors obviously were unable to travel. But we figured out quite quickly that we can actually continue to implement our activity, implement the the new port, the new platform, um, even remotely. So we are going ahead, and hopefully by October we should be able to open a new market, a new a new trading platform. Uh, are there lessons that you've learned, uh, Bola and Jamali, from the first half that you are onboarding for the second half of the year? I'm sorry, sir, could you repeat that? Yeah, well, I, I was asking if there are lessons that we've learned from how you handled the first half of the year of the pandemic, the lockdown, the release from the lockdown, and the second half of the year. What's your outlook on that? Well, um... The, the, the major learning is that we can always get more efficiency out of the markets. Uh, we have seen a lot more efficiency in operations. We've seen a lot more efficiency in communication. We have held um, webinars and market outreaches quite effectively over this period of time. And I think that is going to continue into the future. I think the physical footfall in various areas is going to reduce, um, especially in the inter entertainment and leisure industry. Um, and that covers, you know, um, restaurants and cinemas and travel. We think that those will, um, will, will remain a bit suppressed for a while. But um, we've seen an increase in delivery services. We've seen an increase in um, technology companies' outputs, in demand for technology company output. And so those are really the growth areas that we think are going to happen over the next couple of, over the next couple of periods. Um, as a result, we are positioning ourselves to be um, the market of choice for those kind of companies when they're raising capital and when they're also providing liquidity for their shareholders. Uh, we, we appreciate your time speaking with us on our Rice Exchange this evening. Thank you very much, Bola Jumali, the Chief Executive Officer, Managing Director at NES, NES the Securities Exchange.